Now let's talk about the forced damped vibration. Now the difference of this kind of vibration from the free vibration is that you need a continuous supply of an external disturbing force which is x0 sin omega t where x0 is the amplitude and fe is the uh, way we describe the external excitation force. So you have a mass, you have a spring and you have a damper. So if you draw the free body diagram for this particular configuration, you will get this. So you will have your excitation force, let us say it is moving downwards, you will have x0 sin omega t, you will have these up and this is the damping force. Okay. Your motion is downwards, so you will have a pseudo force acting upwards. Okay. So this would become mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to x naught sin omega t. Alright. Now the solution of such a differential equation is let us say the particular integral of this solution is particular integral of the differential equation solution that is given as xp okay and this is given as x0 into sin omega t minus phi. Now phi is the phase difference between the displacement and the force vector okay. So I will write down that phi is the angle through which through which the displacement vector the displacement vector lags the force vector lags the force vector okay so if i differentiate this part i would get xp dot and this would give me omega into x naught so this would become cos but i'll keep it sine by adding 90 degrees to it we will get sine of omega t minus phi plus pi by 2. If I differentiate this part, I get xp double dot, that is the acceleration. So you will get omega square x naught, this will again become cos, I will again add 90 degrees to it, so you will get again sin, that is omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 and you will get pi over here. So we will do one thing, we will put this part, this equation and this equation into this equation. Okay. Now we will put the, these equation into this particular equation. So you will get, so one little uh, you know correction over here, this would be minus omega square. Okay. So you will get minus m omega square into x naught sin omega t minus phi plus pi okay and you have plus c into omega x naught sin omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 and then we have plus k x plus k into x okay and this x is x naught sin omega t minus phi and this part would come on the left hand side and you will get f naught sin omega t is equal to 0. If I draw a vector diagram out of it, okay, that vector diagram, let me, let me just rub this part off and try and make a diagram over here. So, this is it. Okay. So you have a displacement let us say like this x. Then the amplitude is x0. So the amplitude is at omega t and displacement and amplitude are at a phase difference of x0. Okay. Uh, or, or phi, not x0, but phi. Okay. So you draw a line like this, a line like this and so this is kx, the spring force, this is the damping force, 
and this is the inertia force. If you draw a vector diagram out of it, that is x naught, kx, this and this, okay, you will get a diagram like this. This is f naught or x naught, x naught. This is c omega x and this is k x minus m omega square x, all right. And uh, this angle is phi. So, from this triangle I can get a value for x naught. So, that x naught would be capital F upon under root k minus m omega square whole square plus c omega whole square. Okay. And the value of phi, so this is 90, value of phi would be tan inverse, tan inverse c omega upon k minus m omega square. Okay, so, these two expressions give you the value of x naught and the phase angle phi. Now, let us divide the entire equation by k. So, you will have x naught as f by k upon under root 1 minus m omega square by k whole square plus c omega upon k whole square. Okay, so, this f by k, I can call it as static deflection okay, and r as omega by omega n, which is the ratio between the forced frequency and the natural frequency. So, this entire thing would now become x naught is equal to x st upon under root 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square. So, make a note of this and the particular integral would become x st sin omega t minus phi upon under root 1 minus r whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square. So, this is the solution for this differential equation. Okay. So, I hope you understood this. After forced damp vibration, we look at the rotational vibrations.